Hey everyone, this is Kathy Kitwana. Welcome to Jurassic Today here on my channel. If you have seen the uh, uh, last episode from uh, last Saturday, then you know that um, all through this month long I will celebrate the 20th anniversary of Jurassic Park 3, which is uh, coming up in uh, mid July. And to celebrate this special occasion, I am going to show you some of my most classic and most valuable uh, Jurassic Park toys that I have uh, collected over the past couple years. And of course we will uh, look at uh, some of my Jurassic Park 3 toys um, in uh, two weeks and in uh, three weeks from now. And to top off the month on July 31st, I will show you my entire Jurassic Park toys collection. It's going to be a huge long episode, almost an hour long. But before we get to that, I want to start with the probably most classic Jurassic Park toy ever. And one of the most classic 1990s toy. And this is the 1993 uh, Kenner Red Electronic Big Tyrannosaurus Rex. So you can see here. And yes, you see that right. I have one in sealed box. As you can see. And this is the toy that has started the dinosaur hype back in 1993. 28 years ago, yet I still remember it very, very fondly. And this was the year when Toys R Us came into Switzerland and opened their first store there. And around the same time, I was in first grade of elementary school. So I remember um, this toy very well being on the shelves. And while there have been dinosaur toys before, um, this toy really started the hype because it was it was nothing like we had ever seen before in terms of size and accuracy. Well, let's take a close look at this toy. Classic 1990s box design. I'm sure many of you uh, remember this. It advertises the realistic dinosaur skin because the figure is made out of rubber for the most part. The movie collector card inside. And then we've got the uh, classic Jurassic Park logo and a Tyrannosaurus Rex riding in the classic Jurassic Park font. And on top of the box, you can see a photo of the uh, prototype of the toy. And it also mentions the uh, two action features that this figure comes with. Uh, the two sound effects. And gets even better. On the back, look at this diorama. They really put a lot of effort into uh, the design, into the box design of this toy as they created the diorama just for this purpose. It gives you an idea on how big this figure is. You can see uh, Alan and Tim, as well as Robert Muldoon, uh, trying to get hold of the T-Rex with their guns and it also mentions uh, some of the other toys that were available back then. I do have the Triceratops and you can also see the smaller dinosaur and human action figures. And this toy was made by Kenner, which uh, later was taken over by Hasbro in the late 1990s. And yes, this figure 
which I have here it really is still in sealed box. It is still attached to the box with the original twisted ties, as you can see. Okay, and now do you really expect me to unbox this Chrysler? No, of course you do not. But that's okay. Since I've got a loose one with me. I'm going to put that box back here so I've got more space. And look at this beautiful figure here. First really accurate T-Rex on the toy market and as you can see my T-Rex is able to stand and it has a straight tail unlike the ones that are boxed they had to bend um, their tails in order to make them fit and it seems a lot of people have no idea on how to straighten the tails on these figures it is pretty easy once you know how to do this. Uh, just put it into uh, boiling water for a couple seconds and then bend it uh, by hand. And then uh, cool it off again and it should stay uh, in place like this, like it's supposed to be. And then you have a properly looking T-Rex. I often see... Um, T-Rexes with the legs uh, bent backwards, that's because of uh, uh, storage issues. Make sure there's, there's no weight on their legs, uh, preferably store it like that in a box with their legs up in the air so they do not bend over time. Now I know you all cannot wait to take a detailed look at this figure and relieve your childhood memories again. Uh, let's take a look straight uh, from the front. I apologize that hole in the uh, dinosaur's rubber around the nozzle. You can see uh, this figure definitely has survived a lot of dinosaur fights. Um, it's actually a figure I have since my childhood, only this one I bought uh, recently, the one in the box, but this one I actually kept all the way through today. And you can see, this is a fantastic model. If you compare it with uh, what's behind me, uh, the uh, fifth scale maquette, uh, a recast of the uh, original Stan Winston maquette that was used for production of the first Jurassic Park movie, then you can see this toy. Um, it's definitely um, scanned from that Stan Winston maquette. It's definitely that typical uh, face that's accurate to what you have seen in the movie. However, the coloring is not. And there was a reason for that. Uh, this toy had to be, the, this toy's design had to be finalized around uh, over a year before Jurassic Park uh, hit the big screens. So coloring wasn't finalized at that point, but the toy had to be finalized for production already. So that's why the coloring is inaccurate to what you have seen in the movie. However, it's more important that the shape and the proportions are absolutely uh, pretty much correct and perfect on this guy. With a few little exemptions that we are going to look at uh, later, but the face is definitely not an issue. This one here, you can see the eyes are perfect, the yellow and black combination. They look exactly like the T-Rex that we have seen in the movie. Take a look at this. And his mouth, the teeth all have a different length. And you can see there's a tongue uh, molded in there, in there as well. And also the upper jaw is molded very nicely. It's good to see that they uh, made the effort. And you can see uh, the gums. There's a bit of a weak point at uh, where the uh, 
uh, guns meet the uh, main body because you of course can open and close the mouth play around with it like that so the uh, rubber would eventually tear if you go rough with this toy too often I remember I became so fascinated with T-Rex the same amount I was scared at first of course uh, when seeing it on screen and so um, every toy that I had of T-Rex needed to look as accurately as possible to what I have seen on the screen because I became fascinated with dinosaurs uh, uh, also in a scientific way I wanted to know each and everything about them and uh, so the toys had to look as accurately as possible and this toy for 1993 standards definitely wasn't bad uh, let's go back across uh, the uh, body you can even see uh, many uh, little details uh, being incorporated into its skin uh, little bumps and muscles and what I really like is that you can even see the ribs on its torso this is really really cool really nice detail and then we do have arms as well uh, sadly the arms when looking at it from this perspective you can see that the arms um, extend outwards quite a bit in an unrealistic way T-Rex had its arms actually much closer not only in the movie but also uh, in real life T-Rex so the, these arms look more like uh, chicken wings or something uh, the arms are movable 360 degrees however I had to glue the right arm into place because they fall out easily over time you can see they didn't paint the arm claws unfortunately would have preferred if they were uh, black or brown or something at least the, uh, the claws um, however they made up for it uh, in the way that the legs are not possible and that allows for some real, really realistic sculpting around the hips and as we go down the legs you can see that the rubber only goes halfway down and then the lower part of the legs is made out of plastic just like the arms are as well and you see this uh, typical board like feet with three main claws and then there's the, even the dual claw uh, molded really nicely now on the left leg you can see the uh, Jurassic Park logo along with the number 09 and that's a pretty interesting story as to why that logo has to be there because as a toy company you cannot copyright something like a dinosaur a dinosaur is basically a public domain uh, every company could make uh, a T-Rex looking uh, exactly like that with the body design being exactly the same like this figure so they had to come up with a way to distinguish this toy as an official Jurassic Park toy and so they uh, designed a rather simple logo and had that stamped on all official Jurassic Park dinosaurs in order to make sure you are getting an official officially licensed Jurassic Park toy so that's why that logo is visible there no logo on the right hand side it's really nice it makes look makes the figure look very accurately and then a uh, quick pan across its tail which is accurately curved as well 
if you uh, compare it with the T-Rex, the big model that's behind me. And on the other side, uh, we can see the red coloring is blending into a green. And take a look at these scales uh, right underneath the torso. You can see the uh, speaker holes as well. That's really nice that they placed uh, the speaker on the uh, underside where it's not too much distracting. Uh, just right next to it is the battery compartment secured with a crosshatch screwdriver and it contains a 9 volt block battery for the sound. So you do not see 9 volt batteries in today's toys anymore but back then it was quite common. But luckily you can still easily get uh, plug batteries anywhere where batteries are sold. And if we take a look at the body again, you can see that the figure is basically, uh, has basically been sculpted into, in two pieces. The rubber meets right before the hips. That can be a weak point as well, because that's simply glued together. Really nice pattern with the dark uh, spots and striping. Although of course it's not movie accurate. Then we take a look from behind. This long tail. And two massive legs. As for articulation, uh, besides the uh, two possible arms, we do not have any real possibility on this figure, but you can uh, bend at least the head side to side. Um, it's not a real point in the neck, but it's possible uh, due to the construction of this toy. And you can at least move around the head, which uh, helps you even more attacking smaller dinosaurs. And then here we are again, looking at it from the side. I am being fascinated about dinosaurs for almost three decades due to the fact that these creatures really have roamed our planet many, many, many dozens of millions of years ago at a size of over 40 foot in length and over 13 feet tall. And so it's, it's really cool to think about uh, that such huge creatures were able to live on our planet a long time ago and that's why I'm very very fascinated with these creatures and want to know everything about them and study their design and their, their body and even every feature they have. Now we have talked about size of their real life counterparts and this figure here is roughly around uh, a 15th or a 20th scale model of that of a real-life Tyrannosaurus Rex. It measures 25 inches, 65 centimeters in length, and at the hips it stands around 8 inches tall, around 20 centimeters. And at that time, back in 1993, this was pretty much the largest dinosaur toy that you were able to get, and it was, of course, the dream of each and every boy I can remember in in my first grade class, each and every boy had to have a dinosaur toy as big as possible. It was really a big hype back then, and it's a time I really, really fondly remember. Uh, let us take a look uh, at the action and sound features of this girl. And yes, it is a girl, since it is supposed to uh, depict Rexy. The Tyrannosaurus Rex that you have seen in the first movie attacking uh, the uh, Jurassic Park 2 vehicle, for example. So this is a female T-Rex. So the sound effects are being triggered uh, firstly by a button on the left hand side in its torso, 
the button is uh, neatly hidden underneath its skin. You just squeeze it together here and then the mouth is supposed to open a little bit. However, that mechanism is broken on mine. That mechanism easily breaks and I'm going to tell you why uh, in a bit. That's the sound that emits for as long as you press the button. It will continue to roar. That's of course not a very movie authentic roar, but um, as I told you, this toy had to be finalized before the movie was, uh, uh, before the movie had completed its post production. So that's the T Rex roar. And why does the mechanism break so easily? That's because uh, of the way that the second sound effect is supposed to work. The second sound effect is a stamping sound that's activated by slamming her feet uh, pretty hard against a hard solid floor. I'm going to demonstrate you this. That's how it sounds like when a 10 tons T-Rex uh, is walking around in your vicinity and you can guess that this from an engineering standpoint probably is not the best idea if you are supposed to play with a toy by slamming it against a hard surface over and over. So that's what eventually made, made the thaw mechanism break and the, the button mechanism inside here as well. Unfortunately mine still uh, triggers the roar, so I cannot complain about it. I can try to uh, show you the uh, thaw moving action on the boxed one. You can see the movement range of the thaw is rather limited, so it's not a big deal if it doesn't work anymore, as long as the roar still does, that's the main thing. But that's not the only weak point. Uh, you can see on the inside of his hips, um, I've got a broken rubber here as well, and you can actually see the stuffing inside. This is like a stuffed animal uh, for uh, some part to make it feel more realistic when you uh, touch the skin, so it's not completely soft, but still uh, feels like, or is supposed to feel like real, real dinosaur skin. And uh, another way I loved to play with the Tyrannosaurus Rex was to attack um, smaller dinosaurs. And from the smaller dinosaurs, I only have the Triceratops uh, left in my collection because the arts and stuff, the smaller dinosaurs. And it's of course also scientifically correct that um, T-Rex attacked Triceratops because T-Rex teeth have been found in Triceratops bones. So it's actually uh, proven that uh, T-Rex um, preyed upon Triceratops. And this toy enables you to recreate that. T-Rex likely attacked uh, Triceratops by biting it into its neck like this. However, even though Triceratops was a herbivore only, you definitely did not want to mess with it either because this animal had one big advantage and it was the 500 pounds head equipped with two horns, which actually weren't even horns, but direct extensions of its bones. So these were very, very stable. And it has been proven actually that Triceratops has been the aggressor as well in fights against the uh, T-Rex. 
Uh, its horns were very powerful weapons. If it rammed it uh, into the T-Rex's torso like this, it would uh, raise its head, just like uh, this toy is able to do. Like this, and then ram its horns into the sides of the T-Rex in its crib. Definitely could hurt him in a deadly way like this. You can see it could easily take down a T-Rex even though the T-Rex is course, much larger and heavier than the Triceratops. So these toys and of course uh, mainly the T-Rex offered hours and hours of playtime fun to me and are very fond memories of my childhood and I'm so glad that I kept this figure until today and that I still was able to find a boxed one. Um, you can still find them on eBay even uh, boxed uh, but the box ones can run up to uh, one thousand dollars. Make sure that if you are uh, getting a box one, that all the uh, twisty ties are still in place, because often they sell the figure uh, with the box. But that doesn't have to mean anything. Uh, um, most options are the figure with the box, but no longer uh, secured in the box. So take a good look when you uh, uh, hunt this girl down. Uh, the Lewis figure uh, runs for around $100. I would not pay uh, over $100 for that. Uh, make sure that it is able to stand and uh, get the tail uh, straight and not bent like it, like it is in the packets. And as a final fun fact before I go, uh, if you want to know the actual retail price from back then, from 1993. The price tag is still attached on the box of this one and you can see it was $29.99 US dollars at Toys R Us back then. It would be at least double this amount if a figure of this scale was to release today. Well, that's, that's interesting to see that this, this was pretty pretty expensive for uh, back then, but on the other hand it was simply the uh, biggest and best quality dinosaur toy that was on the market back then and uh, it really was a groundbreaking toy, a game changer that ignited the dinosaur fascination that is alive and kicking very well until today, thanks to Mattel uh, releasing the uh, toys for the uh, current Jurassic World movies. So thank you so much for traveling down memory lane with me during this episode. Uh, I'd love to hear your childhood memories with Jurassic Park toys. Uh, let me know uh, in the comments below. And if you love Jurassic Park toys then please stay tuned. Uh, Next Saturday as well we are going to look at another classic uh, 1990s Jurassic Park toy and that will be the Tracer T-Rex from The Lost World back in 1997. So uh, I'll see you then. Thank you so much for watching and goodbye. I can try to uh, show you the uh, floor moving action on the box one. You can see the movement range of the saw is rather limited so it's not a big deal if it doesn't work anymore, as long as the roar still does, that's the main thing.